All right, so today we are solving inequalities with addition and subtraction. Uh, the good news is that this is done uh, really, really similar, actually pretty much identical to the way that we solve equations. So you guys um, just got off of some of the most difficult equations to solve, and now we're like going back to step one, <laughs> okay, with inequalities. So the problems that you're working today are gonna seem very simple. Yeah. All right, so here's a couple things you need to know, okay? You solve inequalities the same way you solve equations, inverse operations, okay? So if subtraction is connected to your variable, you add, all right, and vice versa. Uh, you always read the variable first in your solution, and I'll explain to you more um, about that when we uh, do that problem in just a minute. And then we graph the solution. All right, just like we did yesterday. So in example one, I have x minus 5 is less than negative 3. x minus 5 is less than negative 3. All right, so for x minus 5 is less than negative 3, uh, what would I do to get x by itself? Plus 5. Plus 5 on both sides, okay? All right, plus 5 on both sides. And x is less than, what's negative 3 plus 5? Positive 2. Positive two. All right, so um, you just want to kind of double check those signs. Okay, make sure that you get your integer rules correct. All right, now the middle number is always your solution or your cutoff value. All right, 2. Yeah, I have, I have a, a line feature on here. I didn't draw that. Like, oh. I mean, I can draw a straight line, like, okay? All right, sidetrack. Now, one unit to the left of two would be what? One. One. One unit to the right of two. Three. Three, okay? Now, according to my inequality symbol, is this an open or a closed dot? Open. Open, open dot going to the? Left. Left. Lefty Lucy. Righty tighty. That's how you learn how to how to you know tighten up a screw. All right, so B B minus three point eight is less than or equal to one point seven. I don't need to be stressed when I see a decimal or a fraction. Okay. I still I'm just gonna go by the same rules. All right, so B minus three point eight, how do I get three point eight to cancel? I want to add it, okay? So add 3.8 to both sides. All right, so now B is less than or equal to, well, 7 plus 8 is 15, carry my 1, it's going to be 5.5. All right, now just graphing a decimal Honestly, it's just that value needs to go in the middle. Then as long as you choose a value that's less and greater than 5.5, you're really okay. So just because your solution is a decimal doesn't mean that you have to use decimals on the left and right. Okay, so we could say 5 and 6. We could say 5 and 6. All right, would it be an open or a closed dot? Closed. Closed. And is my arrow going to the left or right? Left. It's going left. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, all right. We're going to skip the think pair share. It's just basically the same thing. All right. Now these are going to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, so for the past two weeks, I've been telling you guys about an equation written backwards and how you could solve it, but if you don't rewrite it, it's gonna be a problem with inequalities, okay? Um, and here's why. All right, how would you read this? You would read it 13 is what? Less than or equal to X plus 14. This is not a less than or equal to sign. Because you must read the variable side first. 
So in order to read this correctly, you have to read it backwards. X plus 14 is greater than or equal to 13. So it gets a little confusing, right? So that's why if I rewrite it, then I can read it forward. So I'm going to write the X plus 14. Okay. Does everybody see how the sign is open towards the X right now? Do you see how the sign is open towards the X? So when I rewrite it, my symbol has to stay open towards the X. All right. Do you see how my symbol actually did not change? Right. It was open towards the X in the original problem and it's still open towards the X, all right? But now I can read this symbol accurately. That was not a less than symbol. And if I don't rewrite it, if I don't read the variable first, I'm going to get the arrow wrong on the graph, okay? I see it happen all the time. What? Oh, sorry. Oh, not that one, this one. Why do they make the numbers so close together? <laughs> okay, so x plus 14 is greater than or equal to 13. What would I do now to solve? Plus 14, I mean minus, minus 14. All right, minus 14 to both sides, and x is greater than or equal to negative, negative one. 1. Okay, now I'm going to graph this. All right, what number goes in the middle? Negative 1. What number goes to the left? Negative 2. Negative 2. What number goes to the right? Zero. Zero. Okay. Now, is this going to be an open or a closed dot? Closed. closed. Do you have to put zero at the end of the um, Well, it's zero because zero is one unit to the right of negative 1. You don't always have to have zero on your number line. Okay. Uh, now, your arrow goes to the right. What's the rule for it being open? So the rule for it being open or closed is if the equal to symbol is underneath. So if that line is underneath, that means that number can be a part of the solution. All right. Okay. So um, same thing on the think pair share so we can just move on from that. Now, I know on your notes, um, this point got a little messed up. So you can rewrite it or just kind of line it up with the value that it should have been plotted on. And you can see it up here on the graph too. So now you're going to write your own inequality that would represent this graph. Okay, so write an inequality that would represent this graph. Write an inequality that would represent this graph. What do you guys think? So we always want to start with our variable. Okay, just use x. All right, all numbers have to be, and finish the statement. Perfect. How did you know that it was going to be equal to? Because it's, it's a filled in dot. It's a closed dot. How do you know it's going to be greater than? Because it's greater. The arrow's going to the right. Arrow's going to the right. Very good. All right. That wasn't so much of a challenge, was it? Okay. All right. That's going to be on your quiz and test for your inequalities test. Okay. Now, remember, something from today's lesson or yesterday's lesson is going to be bonus on your test next week. Okay. And that's how that'll work. All right. So in example three, I've got a real life situation. So we kind of practiced these yesterday too. It says to become an astronaut pilot for NASA, a person can be no taller than 6.25 feet. Why do you think that is? Why do you think they can't be like an NBA player? Yeah. Because those space capsules are really tiny. Once all the rockets release off of them, right? The capsule is like small. Anybody kind of feel, start feeling claustrophobic in tight spaces? Can you imagine? I don't like people breathing. Like the panic setting in, like when you look down and you just see like planet Earth. <laughs> like you really are trapped in this tiny space. Like that can start messing with your head. Yeah, it's kind of giving me the, the creeps just thinking about it. Ugh, oh, man, it's stressing me out. Okay, so to become an, uh, an astronaut pilot, I need you guys to write the inequality that represents this situation. Go ahead and try that. I need you to write the inequality that represents the situation. 
All right. Somebody raise your hand and tell me the inequality that you wrote. Come on. Come on. I put X is greater than, is less than or equal to 6.25. Okay. X is less than or equal to 6.25. And we could say feet just to kind of remind us. Okay. Uh, but you don't have to. The, the numbers is really all that matters. So 6.25 feet. Well, I mean, if I said I'm 6.25 feet tall, like, does that really mean a whole lot? Like 0.25 feet? Okay. And then if you see your friend is five feet, nine inches tall. So they give you that height in inches. So what do you guys think we need to do to this value? We need to convert it to inches. How many inches is 0.25 feet? Don't say it out loud. Okay. Think of how 0.25 relates to a hole. All right. How many inches are in a whole foot? 12. Okay. How much is 0.25 of the whole? One fourth. So it's, tell me, three inches. Okay. So I'm going to say X is less than or equal to six feet, three inches. Okay, now what does X mean? That means all of the, can y'all say it with me? The acceptable heights of the astronaut have to be less than or equal to six foot three. Okay, you see how that works? But do you see how when you read it, it, it helps it to make sense like what you're doing here, right? We're talking about heights. Okay, so now answer the question. So you had to do that. You had to set it up so you could answer the question. What I'm going to ask for on your test is for you to write the inequality and then answer the question. Okay? So I need you to answer the question. Write it on your papers. Label. Alrighty. <laughs> All right. What do you guys think? Emily, did you come up with an answer? I did a completely different. Okay, well, but look now. Your friend is 5 feet 9 inches. You have your cutoff value. Trey, did you come up with your answer? Michael? You got an answer? Daniel? You got an answer? Okay, so how many inches did we say is in a foot? 12. 12. Okay, so if they're 5 foot 9, how many more inches do they need to grow to get to 6 feet? Six. Three. Three. And then how many more inches do they have till they hit the limit? Three. So tell me. Six, Six inches. inches. Okay. All right. My friend can grow. Now, this is where you answer. My friend can grow. Up to six more inches. All right, do you guys, um, so I'll just kind of give you a, a really short story. When I was your age, I prayed every night to be five foot nine. I'm dead serious because I played basketball. <clears throat> I'm five five. I prayed like every single night, God, please help me to be five foot nine because I was a point guard. And if you're five foot nine and you're a point guard, then, you know, you could probably get a scholarship and whatnot. God did not answer my prayers. But anybody in here want to be taller than you are right now? No. All right, you just want to stop growing? Okay. All right. So good news for you, most of y'all are probably not done growing yet. Okay. All right. If you understand that, that's everything you need to know for today's lesson.